Hey everybody, it's your boy Zero here for another Gunplaw Review. In today's episode, we're covering the Susanoo, or the Susanoo, depending how you want to pronounce it, from Gundam 00. So this is the main unit for Mr. Bushido, who is the greatest weeb on the planet. Because if you disagree with me, that's fine, but we all know he is. So, yeah. i actually been kind of wanting to get this dude for a while, I also wanted to get the Overflock for a while, but I've been kind of putting it off. And I think I'm going to constantly put it off because there's so many cooler Gundams and Command Units that look so much cooler than it. So, yeah. So I picked up this dude at New Type, but he is available with our friends at Galactic Toys. So if you want one for yourself, uh, use my code down below, my link down below, and yeah, support the channel. Or use any of the other links I have down below for my books or whatever and support the channel. It'll be greatly appreciated. And also I want to thank everybody who got me to finally reach, break that curse and got me to 145. Thank all of you. Because that was driving me slowly insane. So let's just get into the review of this very interesting many GN drive mobile suit. So this is the Sasanoa with everything that comes in box. A tiny sheet of stickers, there is no sticker for the mono eye. The orange sticker went right here. The silver sticker went right here on the arm. Specifically that piece. And for the life of me, I do not remember where I put the white piece. I know it's somewhere up in here. Oh, I think it was up here on the back of this. I don't know why it's there, but it's, I think it's there. It's in a random, vague spot. So, and of course it comes with one dynamic hand, or the claw hand, if you will. A The beam weapon, which is supposed to go on the horns, but I can't figure out for the life of me how to attach it. And it's also the wrong color. It's supposed to be orange, but it's not. The two beam, the uh, two beam, the two swords. And yeah, and of course it comes with the stand pieces for the stand it comes with, which is always a great find. I've said this from the beginning and I'll say it until the end of time. Bandai needs to keep giving every HG and Master Grade their own stand. It just... Stand's not always cheap, and the, sometimes the cheap ones don't work well or they break easy. It's just nice to have a stable stand, especially if the Gunpla in question is, isn't, is say, stable or can stand up under its own weight. It's always good to have a, you know, stand that comes with it. So, let's talk about the flaws, because as much as I like the design of this dude, and it's, it is very unique, it has a lot of flaws. And it comes down to... One, two, three, two, two words to three words, depending on how you want to spell it. Ball joints. This thing is littered with them. Yeah, that wasn't even me pulling. That was just me turning the leg. And the, the hip joint, which is just a ball joint, popped them out. It's in the arms. It's in the legs. It's in the knees. In the shin. The shin, the hips. So this thing will pop off on you a lot. Be careful with the arms when you move them or pose them. There's a chance that the arms will pop off of you. Just either at the forearm point or in the back of the... Because there is no actual connection to the body, per se. It's only through this shoulder joint here, this armor, that the arm is actually attached. So this will pop off on you and you'll just have this entire shoulder go off. So yeah. That is a pain. So, be careful when posing this, or I recommend using the stand it comes with to keep it up, because it will fall on you. Also, another thing, the white pieces here are supposed to form the Jin Claws, but while they do come attached, they can supposedly attach to make the claw. I've never seen it. I've tried it. It just doesn't connect properly. I don't know, maybe the plastic I get was too thin and narrow, but it just fits perfectly here, and I would not recommend separating it. So, yeah. Also, the ball joints are also in the weapons, so 
they too can just fall off on you if you move it too much. So be careful. Like that. They are about to pop out too. Because again, this thing is loaded with ball joints. Ball joints in the feet. Well, technically it's more of a point, but be careful due to all the weight of this thing being on these tiny little pieces here. On the feet here, as you can see here, tiny little point, tiny little point, will literally fall backwards on you. So be careful how you pose it, because the weight will shift it backwards. So, I, but the one thing I do like is this little GN cord slash scarf looking thing. It's kind of neat. And also when I, I'll say this again, because this is technically the re-recording, because the first recording got frazzled. Really just talking about it? Oh yeah. Look, more ball joints. So let's put this back. Yeah, I was recording it. It got frazzled. Lost the first half of this. So, yeah. So, I, this is recording 2.0. So, to catch up to real time, let's show you what the sword can do. Actually, let's do the articulation. More ball joint issues. So, yeah. Be careful with this. That's the arm fully bent. That's the arm all the way up. Knee bend. Like all the way up. I'm literally having my thumb right at the hip so they won't pop out on you. Decent rotation at the ankle, at the foot slash ankle area. No ab crunch. You do have, like I said, the beam attack, which again, if you're seeing it again at, towards the end of the episode, I apologize. But yeah, these things can rotate, so you get decent articulation there because of the attack. So yeah, that's pretty cool. And to line it up with the previous part, so you can combine the two weapons like this, and then put it back in the hand. So I'm going to leave the rest of the review to pass me. So thanks thanks for sitting through this compilation of a re, you know, re-review. Thanks for watching. So back to the present. Like I was saying before the camera had a small stroke and, you know, freaked out, this is, you can combine the two swords to make another weapon. So, that's always an option, but you just have to put, make sure you have the hand you want to put it in, like so, like this. Then top, pop that top part in. There you go. Safe. It's a really cool weapon. And I do like the the beam cord slash scarf looking thing it has going on here. You know, when I was building it, I thought this was a propeller. I'm not going to kid you. It's like, why does this thing have a GM propeller? And of course, it does have its Trinity attack. I believe you have to, if I do this correctly, you open up that. You rotate this. Let's get the, another light on so you can see all the parts. That goes on. Rotate this. So yeah, cannon here, cannon here, cannon there. And this piece was supposed to somehow fit in the middle. And it's not even technically the right color. It's supposed to be an orange color. So you would have to repaint this. But honestly, I can't figure out how this is supposed to fit on the horn. So, yeah. And also, the white piece here really doesn't fit in. It's just barely hanging in there. So, yeah. Way too many loose pieces for my taste. So, yeah. But, I do love the design of it. It's very unique looking, and it will have great self-presence. 
So you will notice, you will never forget that you have this unique looking Gundam. Well, not Gundam, but command unit sitting on your shelf because, you know. This really does not look like any other grunt suit or commander unit in a lot of the Gundam series I've watched. But unfortunately, it made it way too many soccer splashes for it. So let's just get to the summary and wrap up this review. So, would I recommend the Sasanoo? Like I said in every episode, yes. But if you only if you like it, or you like the mobile suits from the Gundam 00 universe in general, I would recommend it. But if you are not a fan of the ball joint, don't get this thing. It is 90% ball joints. And you have to tighten them all up. And... Yeah, it's not worth it if you're not if you're not willing to look past it. Because again, I just happen to love the design of this thing, so I'm definitely going to, you know, enjoy it. But it's such a hassle. You have to be careful with the limbs. You have to be careful with, yeah, mostly the limbs. They will fall off on you. I do love the fact that they give you a stand. That is great to have. And. It's, there's so little color inaccuracies, it's great, so you don't really have to paint anything. So that's always a bonus, because, you know, most Gunpla have, you need a little bit of paint to make it right. This is, you're good to go, but I've seen that, that beam weapon that's supposed to be orange, and it's clear white, it's just absolutely clear, so it doesn't really work. But aside from that, this is great. Like I said, ball joints, you can, if you take it, you can, this is totally recommendable. Especially if you like unique looking suits. Like I said, I got this from New Type when they had their spring sale. I don't know if it's still going. But you can also get it from our friends at Galactic Toys. My link is down below. Uh, Friday I have another custom build. And next week... I will be reviewing the other Bandai Premium, the Load, the Load Astray Omega, which is coming in tomorrow at the time of recording. So, or technically today, since th when this episode goes live, so it's dropping then. Or I may not do a custom build episode. I don't know. I may just do one of the spare mobile suits I have lying around that I haven't had a chance to review. So... Either way, it's going to be a decent review. It's just not going to be a brand new kit. It's going to be an older kit. So, look forward to that. And thanks for watching. And think, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy what you're watching. Hit that bell for notification. And yeah, you're all remember that all of you are loved, all of you are awesome, and all of you are appreciated, especially by me. You guys are all awesome. Thank you for watching. Peace.